Okay, welcome everybody to our first agenda of the day on Thursday, April 6th. This is our 930 agenda. We have one bill that we had deferred earlier, um, HB 984. This is the sensitive places uh, firearms bill, the House's version. In that uh, SB 1230 has passed out of its last committee in the Senate, which was the Senate's version of the sensitive places bill. I'm going to defer this one indefinitely. We're adjourned. Okay, welcome everyone to the our 945 agenda at the Judiciary Committee this Friday, I'm sorry, this Thursday morning, um, April 6th, I think it is, yep. Um, the only item on the agenda is Governor's Message 608 for Michelle L. Um, I don't know how to pronounce your name, Dreer? Dreer. Dreer. Uh, for consideration and confirmation of the Circuit Court of the Second Circuit uh, for a term to expire in 10 years. Uh, for those uh, who are interested, we won't be voting on this until April 12 at 10 a.m. in this room 016. Today will just be the hearing portion of it. So first up on GM 608 is uh, Josh Green. I think he's governor. Or his designee. Good morning. Good morning, Chair, members of the committee. Blake Oshiro, a senior advisor for the governor. Um, he apologizes he can't be here today, um, but asked me to come down um, you know, this is his first judicial appointment as governor, and he really is pleased to stand and support um, Judge Michelle Drewer uh, for this appointment. Um, you know, when the governor was first deciding how to go about reviewing and talking with all of the different uh, candidates and applicants, he specifically asked that he have opportunity to meet with all of them. He thoroughly talked with them about some of their personal history as well as their professional history. Um, and throughout that process, I think what the governor found was that Michelle really was exemplary in her, her dedication to the judiciary. Because she served as a per diem judge for several years, he was impressed not just by the depth of that experience that it gave to her, but the breadth of it because it allowed her to experience a judgeship from many, many, many different issues um, in multiple jurisdictions, and he thought that based on a that, she would be an excellent, excellent circuit court judge, and he found her dedication and commitment to the judiciary just exemplary. Um, she understood justice and what it meant to be a judge, and that's why he really, really strongly recommends and appointed her. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next is Barbara Sauer. Uh, in support. Next is Jennifer Twelltrees. I think you're on Zoom. Barbara Sauer on Zoom. Not here. Jennifer Twelve Trees. Also in support. Uh, next is Brianne Wong Leong. Up there uh, in support. Elizabeth uh, Kuchia or Chuchia. On Zoom. Can you guys hear me? Hi, good morning. It's Kuchia, by the way. Kuchia, okay. Yes, um, I just wanted to, sorry, my dog is barking. Okay. Uh, I fully support uh, Judge Drewyer for this position. Uh, one thing I did forget to add in my written testimony is that when we have our hearings off island, you know, she has participated in, you know, as a judge in Molokai, Lanai, and Hana, and she's always, you know, there with the people, she stays for the the whole day, and that's something that is really important over here in Maui. Okay. And she, and she would she'll be an excellent uh, she'll be an excellent judge in circuit court. All right, thank you very much. Next is Amber Alexander, also on Zoom. Um, she was there. No, oh. in support. Uh, Christina Lizzie. Good morning. Uh, you're still muted. Apologies. Go. Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for the opportunity to testify. Um, my name is Christina Lizzie. I'm an attorney here in the Second Circuit. I practice primarily 
um, as a solo and civil practice. Um, and I was previously a deputy prosecutor and appeared before Judge Dreher um, many times. I echo what Liz Cuccia just said and all the reasons that the governor has nominated her. She has extensive experience throughout our circuit. Um, and it has been wonderful to see her in our rural courts and taking the time to meet with the community and really understand those issues. And again, she's one of the people that's just had some of the longest experience here in our in our circuit, having served as a per diem for several years. I also submitted testimony. I am here on my own behalf today. Um, I do represent an organization called Nahinano, and um, Judge Dreher is involved with that organization. And I just I understand there may have been some testimony that would have been submitted about that, having understood the players in that in the past. And so I submitted testimony just to uh, provide some context. Uh, on that ongoing litigation, and I'm available uh, if the committee has any questions. Great, thank you very much. Next is Victor Ramos in support, Gerard Silva in opposition, uh, Bianca Isaki in support, Daniel Danielle Sears in support, Setsuko Gormley for Law Office of Setsuko Regina Gormley LLLC in support, Douglas Tanashima in support. If anyone's either on Zoom or here, please come up. Adriel, Man Adriel Manor in support, Pamela Schultz in support, Sonia Toma in support, Christina Solomon in support, Matthew Nardi in support, Davalyn Tingen in support, Joel Katz in support, Michelle Kabakong in support, and lastly, uh, HSBA President Rhonda Griswold, Y State Bar Association. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Chair Rhodes, Vice Chair Gathered, members of the committee. Um, I'm Rhonda Griswold, President of the Hawaii State Bar Association. As set forth in our testimony, uh, we went through our standard process for evaluating the nominee, solicited comments from all of our members, had an extensive interview with her, and, have, um, and reached the conclusion that she was definitely qualified to serve as a circuit court judge of the Second Circuit. I'm available to answer any questions you may have. Okay, thank you very much for being here. Uh, does anyone else wish to testify on GM 608 for Judge Druyer? Seeing none. Um, members, questions for any of the testifiers so far? Seeing none, uh, Judge Freer, come on up. Good morning. Good morning. I know I've spoken with all of you, but um, Senator Gabbard uh, prior and probably know most of my history, but for those people who are watching today on Zoom. So I'm, I'm sorry, before we get going, pull the mic closer to you. It, just pull the whole thing closer. Yeah, there you go. Okay. Um, but for those folks who are watching the hearing on Zoom, I thought I'd give a brief, uh, uh, I guess a little um, speech about my past and, and what I've done as far as my legal career. So good morning, Chair Rhodes. Good morning, Vice Chair Gabbard. Good morning, Senator Alfonte. And good morning, Senator San Buenaventura. I was born and raised in Michigan in a little town called Traverse City. After finishing undergrad at Western Michigan University, I moved to Hawaii and worked in the food industry for a short time. At that time, I met a man who had, after law school, become my husband. I relocated to Hawaii after graduating from Thomas Cooley Law School in Lansing, Michigan. I started my legal career working at the Maui Prosecutor's Office, where I worked in district court, family, and circuit court. I did various jury trials and all aspects of litigating cases from traffic to felonies. I was at the Prosecutor's Office for approximately seven years. I moved from the prosecutor's office to the public defender's office, representing indigent clients again, in cases ranging from traffic um, all the way up to a felonies. After working in the government sector, I began working at the law firm of Rankin and Rankin. Soon after, I was made partner. My work involved both criminal and civil litigation. I continued to take court appointments and also 
um, take privately retained clients. After working almost a decade with Anthony Rankin, I started my own solo practice. I continued to work in both civil and criminal cases. Around this time, I also began sitting as a family court per diem judge and later uh, began sitting also in district court as a per diem judge. I continued to do in my private um, practice retained and court appointed cases as well as civil cases working in the circuit court. Since beginning of my legal career in Maui, I've always worked with our rural courts in Hana, Molokai, and Lanai. I believe I have a good understanding of the unique needs of the people residing in Maui County, but not living on the island of Maui. My experience in circuit court includes criminal jury trials, evidentiary hearings, sentencing, minimum term hearings, and parole hearings. My experience in circuit court uh, with the civil matters, I've done civil jury trials, tort cases mostly, administrative cases, all aspects of pretrial work, including motions, discovery, dep depositions, and mediations. I have been a CAP arbitrator, um, arbitrating civil cases as well for the past 25 years. I worked since 2005 as a family court per diem judge, and after that served as both a family and district court per diem judge in the last three years. I've sat um, almost full time, three quarter time, I would think, in mostly family court, but also in district court. I have not taken any private cases since that happened because I obviously couldn't be in two places at once. I believe I run a fair courtroom giving parties time to present their cases, assisting pro se litigants without giving them legal advice, and also managing my calendars efficiently. I look very forward to continuing to serve the people of Maui County and Circuit Court as I have in family and district. Thank you, Senators. Thank you very much. Members, questions? Um, Senator, Senator Sam Thank you. Thank you. Um, thank you for stepping up to become, a, to be nominated for circuit court judge for Maui. And I'd like to commend you based upon the testimony we received. And like I talked to you before, as a solo practitioner, um, pretty well known, at least on my island and sometimes over in Maui, usually I would get some attorneys who are disgruntled, who would let me know on the side whether or not they are unhappy with a nominee. And I'd like to tell you that no one has stepped up. And I'd love the fact that these solo practitioners support you because especially with your history as per diem, because that shows you've had, you have the judicial temperament normally. Um, and it shows the fairness because I don't know that you are going to end up having to rule against one person or the other. And for them to universally support you, that uh, it shows um, a lot to commend you for. So thank you, and I have no, no questions really. I just hope that you continue um, because I know that the circuit court term is longer than a per diem, and, and I hope that you continue to be decisive. I've already told you my pet peeves, which, <laughs> which is one of, is indecisiveness of judges and um, I hope you continue to be decisive, but be fair and to please um, continue to give your attorneys that are in front of you the respect that they deserve. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Buenaventura. I appreciate that. And I will be decisive and um, I will follow and, and complete my, my full term. Okay. So thank you. Thank you. Other questions, members? Senator Elefante. Thank you, Judge. Uh, yeah. Congratulations on your appointment to the Second Circuit in that sense. Um, I asked you this when we met, and so I do appreciate you taking the time to meet with me. Uh, what do you foresee as challenges if you're selected uh, to the bench, and how do you plan to do that as a judge and address some of the challenges? Well, I think there's always challenges um, because we have a lot of people that we serve and we have very few resources. So, um, you know, we're short clerks, we're short judges, we're, we're short sheriffs. Um, the challenge is making it work, which everyone on Maui in the circuit court district and family, we're really fortunate to have a wonderful staff 
and group of folks working and they all really pull together and even though they're they're shorthanded they really make sure that the members of the community get served and i would just continue to foster that um, other than economic challenges there are always challenges i think um, with regard to utilizing all of our special courts and things our resources like that like um, drug court and all the veterans courts mental health courts um, but I think we just need to really make an effort to make uh, to make entrance into those uh, into those specialized um, areas easier and make them available to more people because we have a lot of people who really need assistance making sure that we address the underlying problems of people coming before um, our courts most of it is related to substance abuse and mental illness and we really need to utilize and make available to those folks uh, the special services which can not only uh, hopefully avoid um, coming before the courts again but but help them um, be very contributing members of our community thank you judge thank, thank you, you. Chair. thank you other questions members okay i have a couple um, so um my understanding is that you've already said in your application material that you had a drunk driving um i forget whether well can you just it was in college i understand he was in, he was in undergrad um yeah while well, i was at western michigan university it was i was stopped unfortunately i had been drinking that night um there was no accident no one was injured uh i was working as an intern in pawpaw at the time, so the judge um, allowed me to drive to and from work because I was working another job also and to my internship. And I completed everything that was asked of me. And I don't even think it's on my record any longer. Okay, so it was a, a, a deferred acceptance of no contest or a... I searched the records and I can't find it any place. I mean, it was a really long time ago. I didn't retain any okay. paperwork, but so I wanted to... Oh, go ahead. There hasn't been any repeat of it since then oh no okay. no I, I learned my lesson back in college okay so that was 40 years ago yeah okay um that's when i still could stay up after eight i'm sorry that's when i could stay up after eight so no no repeats um one of the piece people who testified in your favors um, talked about an organization that you're involved with uh nahinano opana yes it's a nonprofit organization to maintain ag lands in especially the haiku area to maintain them as ag lands. So my understanding, there's been some, um, uh, some, well, some litigation, I guess, involved with that. Can you tell us about that a little bit? Sure. Um, it concerns uh, a party who was um, using his ag land to promote concerts, um, weekend retreats, uh, you name it, everything, everything other than ag land. So a group of us from the community, um, Manawai is a neighboring um, subdivision, my property, and there's also on the other side of the gulch, other parties um, who were also being um, negatively affected by the activities that were, we were going on. We formed a nonprofit, uh, corporation to address um, the issues that we saw and this party was applying for a special use permit. So the nonprofit through its attorneys, um, Christina Lizzie was one, uh, intervened, tried to intervene at an appeal that was taken by the party when they were not issued the special use permit. So there was a there's a denial at the planning commission that went up to an appeal by the applying party to circuit court. And then we tried to intervene while it was in circuit court and we were denied. So there are two appeals from the nonprofit. Um, that are still pending. That are still pending. Okay. So I'm one That's of board. five board members. There are five other folks that are board members from um, Manawai subdivision. I'm sorry, which court is that pending in now? Is that circuit or? It's in circuit. Okay. So I would, if confirmed, I would withdraw my my board 
I, I'm the president. I would withdraw that. Um, let's see, there's one more question I want to pick. So there wasn't, um, you had, you've, I mean, you've been on the bench for quite some time now at this point. Yes. You've had a couple of cases that were either, one I think was just outright reversed, a couple of other one was, re, was remanded with certain parts, part, partly vacated, remanded for a new trial. Can you just talk about the legal issues in those two cases? Yes, um, the one that was uh, vacated was a Molokai case. It was an abuse case um, for a child. And after a trial, uh, I found that the child was abused. It wasn't parental discipline. And, you know, just it was very clear to me. The little boy was testifying. He was terrified. And all the evidence the prosecutors put forth, um, bruises and descriptions of what was happening in the home. I've, I've, I convicted and it went up on appeal. Unfortunately, I was in my early days and I, um, I used the wrong subsection when I made my ruling. And so it was reversed. I think if I would have used the other section, I would have been fine. But it was, I don't know, probably more than 10 years ago, more than that. The other case was a very complex um, divorce involved parties, um, uh, one of the parties was a broker. He actually had a brokerage. And so there are very complicated legal issues in that case as regards to lots of bonuses, lots of kickbacks, how things were accounted for. And I kind of, I thought I understood it because I do have a finance background. But um, it went up on appeal and I was, um, it was remanded down. Um, they disagreed with the way I construed one of the bonuses and so that really set the property division chart way off. It was a big sum of money. And so it was remanded back, and we had another trial and the case result. Okay. Um, and you mentioned before that you had just recently had uh, approved a uh, assisted community treatment order. Yes. Can you, to the extent that it's a, I realize it's family court, but to the extent that you can talk about that, what, what was the, the, what was the fact pattern, and, and do you have, what, um, what's the question? Hang on a second, I, I, that wasn't really a question. Um, I guess the question really is, do you have, you're okay with the assistant community treatment law, you're willing to order order medication if you feel it's justified legally? Yes, um, yes, I've had a couple of those, and I just, I spoke to you earlier, and I said that I had just signed one, um, it was, uh, a person who was having difficulty um, with shelter and medication and um, was unable to care for themselves. And their family actually went to a, a doctor who assisted them and we made the petition. Um, I reviewed it and signed it. So I'm also really hopeful that we can get uh, more of that on the neighbor islands, you know, more participation in that program and get the forms out so people know where to go. Uh, and that is available. So, um, and I've done, I presided over many um, involuntary hearings also. And so, yeah, when I, when I know it's necessary for that person, some of them have been in, you know, have been admitted over 10 times. And it seems to be the general issue is always that they are feeling really good when they're on their medicine. And when they go off their medication, things just fall apart. So, um, yes, I'm willing to do that. I think it's necessary in some cases. Okay. All right. Other Mayor questions? Yeah. So, Senator Sanborn, okay, thank you very much. And, and I thank you, Chair, for bringing up those cases. So, for the complex divorce case, how long did it take for you to make a decision from the end of trial to the time of your decision? Less than a week. And, okay. and it went on for nine days. Okay, thank you. And the other thing is, um, despite the reversals that um, Chair Rhodes has brought up, um, will you continue to be decisive? Because like for the complex divorce case, you actually divorced the, um, the parties, right? Yes, I did. And, okay. So will you continue to be decisive despite the fact that you may have been, you may have been reversed or vacated in prior in ICA or Supreme Court decisions? 
you know, I presided over so many trials, and those two reversals were in my first few years of sitting. Um, so I'm grateful that I haven't had more. But your question specifically is, will I continue to be decisive? Yes. Yes, I, I don't want to take more than necessary, if necessary, anything under advisement. I find that leads to continued work for me, and it's I'm a Virgo. It starts to freak me out if I have too many files around. So. Yes, I will. Okay, and parties cannot move on, especially with yeah. divorce cases. They cannot get divorced. Okay, yeah. the, the other thing is, as circuit court judge, um, you are going to be presiding over courts with general jurisdiction, which means probate, felonies, and real estate matters. Because um, in the event you are, you do not know what the law is. What is your procedure to make yourself schooled so that you could continue be to be decisive? Well, what I always have done is um, I always look at my calendars well in advance. I read everything that comes into the office, which is usually the memos. If I don't understand something or I feel someone isn't being straightforward about a case, I break it open and look at it. I read the law. My understanding is I'll have a law clerk. So I've been doing this all by myself. So I'll finally have a law clerk that I can also ask assistance from. But um, yeah, I think that it's just old school. I think you just have to do the work. Okay. You know, you got to break open the books and you got to educate yourself. And, and you can also require your the attorneys to do memos, right? Yeah. Oh, yes. And and I do that when I'm not sure. I ask for briefs on, on things. And, and one last thing. With circuit court... Um, and I don't know how Second Circuit does it, but I know how Third Circuit does it. Um, are you going to be presiding over as settlement judge in some of your cases? Or how are you? I know in district court, we, we have pretrial conferences, and that's when you try to get both parties to settle before you set the next hearing to move the case along. So um, for Second Circuit, as Circuit Court, how do you see yourself as a settlement judge? Well, in family court, uh, we try to keep the settlement judge separate from the trial court judge. So if someone hears a settlement conference and hears, you know, items that might not be admissible in trial, um, we don't want that person to also be the trial court judge. So in circuit court, I'm not sure about their policy on that. Okay. Um, I, I think that people... I, you know, I always try to encourage folks to um, to try to use mediation instead of litigation. And I just think it's so much less expensive, quicker. And in family court, it just allows people to kind of determine their future and what their visitation is going to be like with their children. So I would try to be hands-on um, in circuit court, encouraging that as well. Okay. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you, Senator Gabbard. Yes, and Judge, thank you for stepping forward to serve. I, thank you. You know, how do you handle cases involving sensitive or, or controversial issues that, uh, you know, and in, to ensure that your personal biases do not affect your judgment? Um, if I have a personal bias against something I, and I really felt strongly about it, I would recuse myself if I felt I couldn't be fair or impartial. Um, as far as sensitive cases goes, uh, you know, my experience in family court has been working with, um, you know, child protective services cases um, and, and divorce and paternity. And, but those are, you know, those are very difficult cases sometimes, the child protective services um, mostly. But I don't, I don't have many biases. I mean, we all have biases, but, you know, nothing that I think would prevent me from, from hearing most cases and being non-biased. If I felt I couldn't be fair or impartial, then I would have a duty to recuse myself. I noticed in your resume for uh, a year, you focus uh, on sexual assault cases with mm -hmm. children. How did that affect you in terms of the, personally? Was that a very traumatic thing for you in terms of having to deal with that topic? No, it, it wasn't. Um, I found the children to be amazingly honest, you know, in in their disclosures. And um, that was as a prosecutor. And um, yeah, we, um, we, it didn't affect me. I didn't, I didn't take it home. 
I tried just to be as compassionate as I could as a prosecutor. Thank you, Chief. Thank you, Chief. Thank you. Other questions, members? Okay, thank you very much for coming up today. Uh, we were, as I mentioned at the beginning of the hearing, we're going to put off the vote until Wednesday, April 12 at 10 a.m. in this room 016. So we are in recess until then. Mahalo. Thank you.